Hi guys, Lee Cole here. Thank you so much for taking a look at this webinar, Five Minute Sales System. Read that subheadline because it's really, really, really true. An insanely simple system anyone can use to build a huge business fast. Insanely simple. This is, you're, you're going to see it all. This is as simple as it gets. And furthermore, you're going to see it all for free. This is as simple as it gets. Anybody can do this. I mean, a teenager could do this with ease, all right? And you can build a huge business fast because if you learn my five minute sell system, I'm going to take away one of your major stumbling blocks, which is how to sell your fear of selling. You don't like to sell. All of that just means you're a normal human being, right? I'm gonna take that away. So that, and, and I'm gonna massively, massively simplify the thing. I'm not joking about five minutes. That's really true. I'm gonna massively simplify the thing, which means you're gonna be able to talk to a lot more potential customers per unit time and your close ratio is going to go way up this means you're going to make a lot more money a lot faster arthur's got a great question just to uh kick this off any specific business or something that applies to any business arthur i have used this selling all kinds of uh, the answer is it applies to any business but arthur i've used this selling all kinds of uh local marketing type products, uh, email marketing, press releases, uh, um, video marketing, you know, et cetera, et cetera, so, social media marketing, you know, the kinds of stuff that we normally do. And Arthur, I have used this in other businesses. As a matter of fact, I created this myself. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person in the world who's thought of this, but I created this myself way, way back, uh, way, way back. And uh, Arthur, are you asking me if that's involved? I created this way, way back, like a long time ago when I was, uh, when I sold real estate, which I did for, um, which I did for close to a decade. Now, so answer this question. Think about it. Okay. I, I also like, look, I, I also, I'm a born teacher. Okay. I love to teach. Okay. I like a lot of back and forth. I love questions. I love, uh, I love interaction. It helps me help you. I got a question right up here for you. You love sales, right? I mean, you get up in the morning and you think, should I go to the beach today or should I get on the phone and do some sales? Or should I go out and see some people for sales? Yeah, Rick, Rick is an honest person. <laughs> so is Kim. <laughs> yes. Tom, that's what I love is the income it brings me. But Tom, let's say if it was like, of course, nobody would do this if it was for free. I'd just hang out at the beach, right? But just go with me here, Tom, because you've been on a lot of webinars with me. You, you know me. Would you do this for free? Yeah, I'd rather. Arthur says, no, I mean, who would? I would Arthur says, I would rather let crabs crawl over my chest. I would rather let crabs call, oh, crawl over other parts of my body. I mean, honestly, I'm like Tom. I love the fact that I'm good at this. I love the fact that this is how I make money. I love the fact that it provides me a really good living. But really, guys, I mean, when it comes down, and, and gals, I got a lot of ladies on here, ladies who have never been on a webinar with me. I'm, I'm a dinosaur. I'm a freaking dinosaur. My 21-year-old daughter is trying to help me move into the 21st century. It's not going to happen. So when I say guys, that's the all-inclusive, gender non-specific guys. Okay, so guys, <laughs> dinosaurs rock. I would literally, maybe not. I would, as a metaphor, I would rather chew glass than sales, except for the fact that I can make a lot of money doing it. And uh, so many of you... Uh, yeah. So many of you just said no. Roger, if you're having audio problems, I don't think anybody else is. I, I would suggest that you uh, check your audio on your computer. And if that doesn't work, then uh, just uh, get off the webinar and come back in. That'll probably solve your problem. So, yeah, I mean, 99% of people out there, un unless you're some freak or you're just lying, but everybody on this webinar is apparently. Uh, very truthful, because I had a zillion hell knows, right? And I'm like, Tom, I kind of like sales because I know how much money it makes me, but it's still very stressful. 
it's still very stressful. Uh, Rick has a uh, idea for you, Roger. He says, switch to phone and back to computer usually fixes audio. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate that. Let's look at this another way. Well, Keith, this is beautiful. Keith says, I love sales, just not rejection. This is kind of like saying for a major, for a, a guy who, and it's usually a guy, ladies, who wants to be a major league baseball player saying, I love hitting home runs. I just don't really like striking out. Okay. But, uh, you know, I mean, even the best strike out more often than they get on base, right? Nobody has a 500 batting average. Let's look at this another way. I want you to think about this. This is so important you think about this from this point of view. Here's another question for you. As a consumer, so not as a salesperson, not as a business person, as a consumer. Now, this next thing is tongue in cheek. You love to be sold to, right? You love that. You love the process of going out and buying a car, not through Carvana, where you just pay it and they bring it to you, but, you know, the, the old style, haggling for the car and all that stuff, or you go out and buy some major appliances and you haggle about those. Rick, Rick is Rick's Rick is like the most honest person on the planet. Avoid salesmen if at all possible. Absolutely. Yeah, you're buying a house. I mean, you love, you know, it wasn't stressful if you bought a house, right, with real estate agents going back and forth with the contract and the seller or the buyer being totally ridiculous. That did not stress you out, right? You felt peaceful and in control when you're in situations like that. Of course, this is tongue in cheek, right? You do feel threatened when you buy stuff. You do, th you do feel an inordinate amount of stress when you are a buyer buying things. And honestly, that was me drinking water. So, and honestly, even if you're not haggling, I mean, even if it's like, okay, if you're buying a whatever gum costs, a dollar, two dollar pack of chewing gum, it's not a big deal, right? But, you know, let's say you're going to buy, um, I don't know, and a new audio system for your house, you know, like one of those big audio systems that you hook up to your TV. If you're like most people, there's still some backward and forward. There's still some figuring out which one you want. There's still some, God, did I buy the right thing? There's a lot of that. It's still stressful. Okay. So not only is selling stressful, but buying is very stressful, right? And especially you put those two together. We all hate to be sold to all of us. One more piece to the puzzle, guys. Roger says, what about online? And I think that was supposed to be online there. Well, Roger is still true. It's just that you, the set lot, like I, I'm thinking you're thinking like with a sales letter where you don't interact with the buyer and all that stuff. Yeah, but, uh, but still, I mean, Roger, and I'm not talking about you buying something less than 50 bucks, but if you were buying something via sales letter for 300, 400, 500, $600,000, I mean, there's, it's, there's still stress, right? I bought this huge course from about copywriting for hundreds of dollars, you know, which is, you know, it was great. It was cool. I learned massive amounts. Um, I, I'm not somebody to do, to spend money spontaneously. It's just not in my nature. So I spent a couple of days thinking about it, right? Hitting up a couple of my friends that I knew had, uh, had been through the same course and said, well, what did you think about that? And then kind of thinking, you know, you just go through that stuff, Roger. Okay. So, uh, yeah, even online. Now your goal Okay, so we got the fact that selling is stressful for you, and we got the fact that uh, buying or being sold to is really stressful for the buyer, but then we got you. You're here. I suspect you have other things to do on Monday morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is where you are, besides listen to me, you know, jawbone about this, right? Except that your goal is to build a nice local marketing business. Okay, I'm pretty sure everybody on this call, your goal is to e either have a nice business or take a nice business and make it better. 
So if that's true, and we're going to assume that's true for all of y'all, in order to get paid, in order to have someone buy your deal, whatever you're selling. So Arthur, whatever you're selling, video, uh, uh, social media posting, we've had a lot of products like that hit the market lately. Great products, by the way. Um, Google ads management, whatever. I mean, just that whole world of stuff. In order to have someone buy your deal, which is the only way you're gonna get paid, you're going to have to sell. It, you're just gonna have to sell. And uh, your prospect, the person that you're selling to, they're going to have to deal with their stress, their fear about you selling to them. Now, do you all see that we have a problem? I mean, this is like in that movie, Houston, we got a problem here, right? I mean, do you understand that, that I have outlined for you exactly how it happens, the selling thing, 90, 99% of the time, unless you're going to do it my way, exactly how the selling thing happens. But yet now you got two parties that are really stressed out on, on either end. Do you understand this? Do you see the madness with this? It's kind of a perfect situation for major stress and losing business. Now, in order for your prospect to buy what whatever it is you're selling, right? <laughs> Arthur. Yes, Arthur says, kind of like getting spanked as a kid. Yes, it's very stressful for both parties. Absolutely. I'm, I was a receiver of that when I was a little kid. So in order, for, and I have children also, in order for your prospect to buy whatever it is you're selling, which is going to be of huge benefit to them. I mean, you think the stuff you're selling, right? And again, I don't really care what it is. Uh, Google ads management, video marketing, all that stuff. Huge benefit. You think what you can do for a business compared to what they're paying you? Now, what they're paying you because you have really a very, uh, your, your profit margin in these businesses is amazingly high compared to your average business. Okay, so what they're paying you is a lot of money in your pocket, but what you're doing for the business compared to what you're receiving from them, huge benefit to the business, okay? So, but in order for them to buy your thing, they're gonna have to suffer being sold to, and they hate that, by a gal or a guy who hates selling, okay? And I'm kinda, kinda repeating myself a little bit here, but I want this to be really, really clear. It really does not have to be this way and it's so much better when it is this way. Arthur, you're say, saying it is this way for you now? Is that what you're saying? I think Arthur's saying that. You know, selling and the need to sell is as old as dirt. It's never changed because human psychology has never changed, all right? If I, if I were a cave man and I had uh, a, I don't know, uh, a wildebeest that I had just killed. I don't know if cavemen kill wildebeest. But anyway, if, if I had a woolly mammoth that I just killed and you wanted part of it, but you had something I wanted. So we got a back and forth thing. That's that's like a, a, a very small economy there, right? It's still the same thing. Both parties are really worried about it. You know, they're still under stress. Like, oh my God, did I get enough? Uh, did I get enough of the, you know, uh, woolly mammoth uh, to warrant giving Lee all the stuff I gave him? No, I don't think I did. Oh my God, I made a mistake. All of that stuff. It, this all fear-based, right? And it's all, and but but it's just part of hum, human nature. This has always been true. All technology did, and this gets back, I think, to Roger Roger's comment about uh, is this true online? All the technology did for us, frankly, was to give us other ways of communicating. It did not change human psychology. I mean, look at the internet has been around since the 90s-ish, mid 90s, whatever, right? I mean, literally, you think human psychology is gonna change in 25 years. And no one, by the way, is arguing with me about this. Well, there's that, Arthur, but that's a, that's probably just adding fuel to the fire. 
but nothing, I mean, human psychology is not changing, excuse me, in 25 years, maybe in 250,000 years. I, I don't even think that, right? But not, not in 25 years. The internet did nothing but just give us other channels of communicating with each other. Now, check this out. So let's talk about how people buy. Because the buyer is a constant in this thing. Okay, The only person that's going to change their approach, you cannot expect the buyer to change their approach to this situation, right? They're not going to suddenly say, hey, I've got a new way of buying that's going to be really unstressful for me, so now I can deal with all these asshole salespeople, right? They're not going to do that. And furthermore, you are the salesperson. So the person that needs to change their approach is you because the buyer is not going to change their approach. Check this out, what John Dewey uh, wrote down in 1910. This is how people buy, the steps they go through to buy. The person, the buyer, at some point says, hey, I need something, right? Whatever that is. And we're not going to get into benefits and features and all that stuff on this webinar. I'm, I'm huge about that. But but the, the nuances, thank you, Don. I really appreciate that. The nuances are not the issue here. It's the big picture. So you got a problem. Okay. First and most important step, John Dewey said. And, and so what do people do? Well, they search for information, right? I mean, what would you buy in 1910? I don't know, were cars out in 1910? I can't, I, I don't remember if the Model T was out by then, maybe not. Okay, well, you'd buy a house, okay? I mean, you could buy a house in 1910, right? So, I mean, what, what would people do in 1910 when they buy a house? Probably exactly the same thing that they do in 2019. They would go look at more than one house usually, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna search for some information, right? They're gonna evaluate the alternatives. Let's go with the house metaphor, okay? Because it makes it easier to talk about when I'm talking about something besides just, hey, Thelma, it's so nice to see you. It's so much easier to talk about, you know, something concrete. So let's go with the house thing. You're buying a house in 1910, all right? Way, 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 way before all this technology. So you need a place to live. You want to buy a house. You look at some houses. You find two or three that you like. You sit down and you sit there and think about which one's the best for you. And you may think about that on a totally emotional basis, like I walked into this house and I just fell in love with it. That's one way of doing things. Or you may just be a complete robot, more like, like me. And uh, I'm not saying one's right or wrong. I'm just, hey, Stephen, aloha, buddy. I'm not saying one's right or wrong. What, what I'm saying is, People buy different ways, but everybody does the same thing, right? You may be like me and you're going to sit there and just make a little list of what I like about this house and don't like about this house and what I like about the other house and don't like about the other house. But anyway, you're going to evaluate, right? And then you're going to, they had real estate agents back then in 1910. So you're going to call up the agent uh, They or 1910, maybe you had to just like walk over to their office and say, you know what, we've decided to buy that 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 particular house you're going to make a decision and then uh everybody goes through post purchase behavior which a lot of times for you know buyers remorse i mean it's it's usually not a totally positive experience which is something to keep in mind but even in 1910 this is the way people bought things according to john dewey so Again, that's approximately what people go through when they think about buying stuff, and it hasn't changed. Now, I want to look at this again, and I want uh, we're going to look at this with a little finer toothed comb. This time, instead of just reading it, we're going to look at, so you got a buyer and a seller, right? We're going to look at who's in control of this process. The buyer realizes this is long before they see the house, right? Long, long before they talk to the seller, long before they talk to the real estate agent. They're just sitting on their porch. <laughs> and uh, Ray, it's happened to all of us, you know, and they just scratch their head and say, you know what, honey, we need a house, right? Who's in control of that? The buyer or the seller? This is obvious because the seller's not even there, right? The buyer's in control of that. That's something that happens to the buyer. 
So who's really in control of the information search process? I mean, who's who's going out there looking at all the houses? You know, I mean, nowadays people get on the internet and get you know get on you know get in the car and drive around neighborhoods. I mean, it's the buyer. And who's who really decides? Now we're going to get to the seller's part in this in just a second, or the salesperson's part in this in just a second. But who really decides? Hey, we've decided to buy this house. I mean, that's really the buyer. And who sits there? And amen, Rick. <laughs> who really, uh, who, who sits there after they bought it and, you know, it rains really, really hard and they got a little leak in the roof and, you know, th then they say, oh, God, we bought the wrong house. You know, who does that? That's the buyer, right? Yeah, I mean, from, from the buyer's point of view, they're in control or at least would want to be in control of this whole buying process. So the entire buying process psychologically is really controlled by the buyer, but the whole goal of selling, now, now get this down deep in, in your system, the whole goal of selling, the whole rationale of having salespeople is for us, and, and you are the salesperson in your business, okay? The whole rationale for having salespeople is for us, the salespeople, to be in control. I mean, really, you don't want somebody buying your deal, your video marketing deal, your press release deal, your social posting deal, just out of random chance, because you know that's never gonna happen, right? I mean, nobody's gonna land on your Facebook page about, um, I'm going with the social media posting thing, again, because that's been kind of hot lately. That's a great business model, by the way. Nobody's gonna land on your Facebook page and say, hey, look at their Facebook page. Hey, look at my Facebook page. My page sucks. Their page doesn't suck. It's rare when somebody just puts two and two together, picks up the phone and calls you out of the blue. That's pretty rare. Even when that happens, you're still gonna have to do some stuff in the background, especially nowadays to get, the, to get that person's eyeballs on your page in the first place. There's just too much noise. So random chance, if you just depend on random chance, you're going to starve. Now, I don't care if you're doing a face-to-face -face sales call, like, you know, we're talking to the buyer now. You're, you're, the, you're the seller talking to the buyer. You're the salesperson trying to sell your deal to a buyer. I don't care if you're doing a face-to-face -face presentation on the phone, on Zoom, or, and I think it was Ron that brought this up, uh, even if it's something even non-personal like sales letter, our whole goal as business people as salespeople, and again, you are the salesperson in your business, our whole goal, check out this last phrase in that last sentence, is to take control of the prospects buying process so that they buy our deal today. Somebody argue with me about that. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong, because <laughs> I'm not. Our whole goal is business people Give me some amens here, guys. Just uh, A, just make sure that I know you're listening. Our whole goal as business people, as salespeople, is to take control of this process. But the process is inherently controlled by the buyer. It's like it gets worse, right? You know, like I pointed out earlier, there's a bit of a power struggle here. And that power struggle, that tug of war, between you and the prospect makes, check this out, see if you agree with me. It makes them very suspicious and less likely to buy. Who here is a buyer of stuff has really worried about getting screwed again, besides me? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, Roger, that's a beautiful thing. Hold that thought. And if I don't mention you, uh, <laughs> Arthur, you're hilarious. Uh, if I don't mention the, the fact that you said that, remind me in uh, like five minutes when I, you'll, you'll, you'll see when I'm talking about what you're talking about. So the prospect is suspicious, right? Less likely to buy. I mean, when, you know, when, when they are faced with you, the salesperson, or on the phone with you, or on Zoom with you, or just receiving an email for, from you, what are they doing? They're sitting there thinking about, what's the catch? Is this a scam? How am I going to get screwed? 
how am I going to avoid getting screwed? Right. That 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 is in the buyer's head, like top of mind. Keith, yeah, thank you. Well, and Rick says the buyer can walk away at any time, right? Even if you got something unique, Rick, I mean, they can still walk away, right? I mean, it's not like somebody had a heart attack and you're the only uh, emergency room in a hundred mile radius. That, that's not the kind of stuff we're selling, right? So uh, they can still walk away. They can just decide to keep their money and not and not spend it. So that power struggle between you and the prospect makes them suspicious and a lot less likely to buy. And it makes you totally stressed out. And this gets back to the beginning of the webinar. It makes you generally not really want to do much selling, except that you know you got to in order to make money and you like making the money. But it's really not something that you get up in the morning and rub your hands together and say, besides the money issue, say, I can't wait till I get in the trenches selling. I just can't wait for the, all that stress, right? Right here, this thing. I'm pointing to it with my mouse and not wanting to do much selling. And by the way, I should have added the word prospecting too. Thelma says, I get a lot of people setting appointments with me, but they don't want to hear what I have to offer. Uh, they, um, um, you know, basically it goes sideways. You're stressed out. They're, they're stressed out. Nothing happens. Thelma doesn't make any money. Right? If you don't want, to, look, look, if, if, if you really in your heart think, I've got to sell, I've got to sell because I really love making that money, but God, I'd rather chew glass than doing this, right? Stephen, that's great. We'll talk about that later. I love that. But, and Stephen, I'm going to make the process. <laughs> Stephen says, Stephen focuses on the process rather than re the results. Amen. But Stephen, I'm going to make the process so ridiculously simple that you're not even going to have to play little games with yourself about that. Now, if you if you are stressed out about selling, you're not going to prospect. If you don't prospect, you're not ever going to have any business. You're not going to be closing the business. I'm telling you guys, these local marketing businesses, this stuff is not that hard to sell. I mean, it's not like selling an airplane, okay? I mean, it's not that complex. There's one decision maker. There's one sales presentation. They buy or they they die. I mean, the world of the, the world of corporate selling is massively more complex than this. Okay, it's just not that hard, but it's very hard. I mean, on an abs on a I don't know relative absolute, but it's very hard for you, right? It's very hard for you. That's what today's free webinar is about, me fixing this for you. This whole issue of, I don't, you know, I have to sell. I'd like to sell. I like to sell, you know, kind of like the little train. I think I can. I think I can. But I really know that I really hate this. I mean, if you want me to put my hand on a stack of Bibles and actually tell the truth, selling sucks. <laughs> you know? But this is the kiss of death for your business because I'm telling you in this next Number is not something I pulled out of my hat or anywhere else for that matter. 80% and, and those of you who have been in classes with me this year, you've heard me say this on multiple occasions. 80% of the time that you spend in your business had better be prospecting in order to find people interested in your deal, pitching your deal to those people, right? Uh, ignore my rescue dogs. They 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 get um, nervous sometimes. Pitching your deal to people and upselling those people to more expensive deals. That right there is your business. Your business is not futzing around with websites. Your business is not tweaking the the background uh, that goes on the green screen thing for the video thing. I mean, if you think that's what you're doing for a living, you. I mean, it's great, but you're seriously shooting yourself in the foot because I can go to Fiverr and hire people to do stuff like that for me all day long for peanuts. But yet I make a lot of money when I sell that stuff. So who's making the money here? The guy who's the salesperson, me, or the tech person on Fiverr or, you know, you know where, wherever, Reddit, where, wherever you get them from, right? It's me. It's not them. So futzing around with the technology is not your deal. Yes, knowing about it's your deal, but futzing around with it, actually doing it, not your deal. Selling it, that's your deal.
80% of your time. That's the minimum number, 80% of your time in your business. If you're not prospecting, if you're not on a sales call, sales pitch, doing a Zoom meeting, whatever, if you're not hitting people up to upsell them to your more expensive deal, if you're not doing that, generally, you are screwing up and you are not making any money. I think everybody is going to agree with me about this. Okay, I mean, I mean this is it's just obvious. So the bottom line, how long have we been on this webinar? 38 minutes. It took me 38 minutes to make you understand deep, deep down that selling sucks and being sold to sucks, right? Again, it doesn't have to be this way, and it's massively, massively better when it isn't. This is the traditional sales model in broad strokes. You prospect to find people potentially interested in your deal. Prospects, right? You qualify them. You should. Most of y'all skip this part because you don't know how to do it. You qualify them, which is fine. You don't, hey, you don't need to know how to do number two for the five-minute sales system. It's, it's taken care of by the system. But in the traditional model, you qualify them to find if they're ready, willing, and able to buy your deal, just so you're not doing what I call whipping dead horses, right? You pursue them, right? So, so you got a couple of prospects today, some people who answered your email, raised their hand, uh, called your you know, number, whatever. They, they, they raised their hand and say, yeah, I'm, I'm interested, okay? So, and then what do you do? You pursue those people with the intention of getting them on a real sales presentation, and on that sales presentation, you tell them about your deal, the benefits, the features, the when, the where, the why, and of course, the how much. You just tell them all of that stuff because you assume that they want to know or need to know all of that stuff before they pay you money. Notice, I'm alluding to what's coming next. You assume that, right? You basically shove all of this information, the benefits, the features, the when, the where, the why, the how much, you shove all of that down their little throats without even knowing if they need to know this. And that may, that sounds very counterintuitive to most people who have some experience in selling. You ask them to buy after that, and I'm kind of joking, but it's not really a joke. Most of you skip this part. You know, this is the big gulp, right? This is the close. You know, it's like I've gone through all this crap and gulp. Are you ready to buy yet? You know, because I mean, it's Fisher cut bait time. Most of you kind of skip that or you just don't do it with enough force in the traditional sales model for it to have any effect. Some say yes, a few. Most say no. You know, uh, most of those are just tire kickers who say no that you've wasted all this time with, right? because they lied when you tried to up here. They, if you did qualify them, they were lying. Yeah, tell me that doesn't happen, those of you who have experience doing this, okay? The, the newbies, maybe not so much, but those of you who've been in the trenches, you know that they lie when you try to qualify them. So you ask them to buy, you answer their, <laughs> they lie like dogs, Arthur says. Mm -hmm. You answer their, so so they have an objection, okay? And let's say it's a real objection. It's like, I need to know this, Lee, before I give you money, a real objection. You know, I'm not sure if this is going to do whatever, right? Like, uh, yeah, I get you, man, but I don't know if I really need that. And so what, what do you do? You answer their objection. In other words, it's like a little chess game. You counter their objection in some sort of self-serving way. Hand on a stack of Bibles. It is self-serving, right? Yeah, it, and it should be because you want them to buy. You try to close them again. You 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 hit that objection. You say, okay, you do you understand that? Yeah, I understand that. Cool. So now are you ready to get going on this deal? And if they don't buy, you hound them somehow <laughs> until they buy or die, right? You call them back. You know, you put them on a little tickler file. You call them back once a month, you know, whatever. You do your stuff, right? Your follow-up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, Rick. I, I think you might have a couple of objections on that. 
And that's called professional, Arthur says, and that's called professional. Arthur put professional in quotes because Arthur understands what I'm talking about. But yet, Arthur, this is the way most people do it. And quite frankly, this is the way I've taught. I have taught a lot of y'all to do this because I didn't really want to. Uh, I mean, I can only on, on previous courses, I can only teach you so much. And I try to make the courses that you take for me very focused so that you actually do learn something. And the traditional model does work. It does work. OK. It's just really not very efficient. Now. The traditional model, does that sound fun, appealing, low stress, exciting, you know, pleasant? Does that sound pleasant? I mean, at the end of the day, let's say you had two sales presentations today and you went through the traditional model with all that. Are you going to come home or maybe you're already home, you got a home office like me, but are you going to kick back and say, hey, man, that was a great day. I'm energized. You know, you go talk to the wife or the husband, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the dog, whatever, and say, hey, you know, you, you want to go out and do something cool, you know? No, no, you're beat up. They're beat up. You're beat up. Everybody's beat up. You're stressed out. It is tedious, but, and Stephen, it is tedious, and you can make a lot of money. Stephen, hold that thought. I'm going to tell you how to make a lot more money. This is hateful. It's hateful for you. It's hateful for them. And this, my friends, is why most salespeople develop really thick skins. But except we don't. Okay. And I look, I've been selling stuff since I was 12. I'm 62. All right. I've been selling stuff for half a century. No joke. When I was a kid, I used to sell light bulbs door to door. And also around Christmas time, I used to sell Christmas trees. Okay. You have to develop really thick skin. Somebody mentioned the rejection. You get a lot more rejection than you do sales. Most of your life is spent being rejected. That's tough. I, I don't care how much of an emotional robot you are. That's really hard. It's, it's, this is what most salespeople do. Okay. And this is really not, I'm not really exaggerating all that much. Most professional salespeople, this is including you using the traditional model, spend their lives, their time abusing, pressuring, controlling, and manipulating others. And just generally being a pain in the ass. And I go back to the used car salesman metaphor, right? Okay. And then someone uh, said, avoid, you know, when I was talking about selling cars, somebody said, avoid the salesperson at all costs. I mean, I remember when I was a kid and my dad wanted to buy the, the family car. My dad was a salesperson. He used to sell aluminum siding, which was one more tough business. Talk about having a thick skin. He had one. But my, you know, my dad said, uh, I remember when I was a kid, my dad said, okay, well, we're going to go to the car lot and look at cars. I said, great, dad, when are we going to do it? We're going to do it about eight o'clock tonight. But dad, won't they be closed? Yeah, they're going to be closed. That's why we're going there because there are no salespeople, right? A professional salesperson avoiding the salesperson because it's brutal. You know, normal human beings, you guys, normal human beings don't really want to be the person that's pressuring, controlling, manipulating others and just a general pain in the ass. Most of y'all don't want to be that. Look, you're not psychopaths or sociopaths or wh whichever kind of pathology fits that thing. That's not you. You're normal human beings. And frankly, your buyer, most normal people do not want to be sold to by that person. Used car salesperson, hello? With traditional selling at best, salespeople just get really, really good at hiding the icky stuff. This is really true. This is what it's all about. When you get a lot of training, the best salespeople are chameleons. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, you know, and, and here I'm talking about pacing and matching and all that stuff, you know, where you're psychologically making the other person say, I'm just like you. I'm not just like you, but I'm going to manipulate you. So where do you think I'm just like you? Because I'm creating false trust, right? I was taught all that stuff and it actually works. It's brutal. It was brutal. It, but it actually does work. I was taught all that stuff literally by some of the best sales trainers out there in the 80s and 90s. I can do that, but it's brutal. And isn't it kind of sick? Look, you have a really, really valuable, beautiful thing to sell that's going to massively 
help your client's business. Isn't it kind of sick that you start out the whole thing with all of this manipulation, all of this hiding the icky stuff, all of this, you know, being a chameleon. If you're, if you have a lot of training, you know what I'm talking about there, guys. Okay. If you've ever done, if you've ever done really high level training, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And those of you that are new, you're just like sitting there thinking, look, man, I mean, can't I just be me and make a lot of money selling? Can I just be me? Not with the traditional sales model. You can't be you. You got to become somebody different. It's just sort of sick. So let's go back to how people buy. Remember the John Dewey list, the big list? So back in the day, I made my own list of how people buy. It's a lot simpler than Dewey's. It's called Trust, Value, and Decision. It was a long, long time ago, long before the internet. I, I, I figured out that the, these are the steps that people go through. It's essentially the same as Dewey's list. Prospects have to trust you, the product the company, and that the product's going to fix their issue. They have to feel like they're giving value, really, which means that they would rather have the thing that you're selling them than the money that they're going to give you for that thing, right? That your thing feels like it has greater value than their cash, right? Okay. And of course, they got to make a freaking decision. Otherwise, it's all for naught. So in traditional sales, we want to get control of this whole process. We want to make, notice the word make, force, make them have the trust, see the value, and of course, sign on the dotted line. We want to make that happen. But then the prospect is trying to protect themselves from this manipulation, this abuse, all, all of this stuff. They're trying to protect themselves because they don't want to get screwed yet again. So they're trying to be in control of the same process that you're trying to be in control of. The prospect really wants to decide if they trust you on their own. They want to determine the value of your deal themselves. They're not idiots. They're people just like you, right? Matter of fact, they are you, except they're just in a different chair, right? And quite frankly, they don't want to be pushed in the corner by some dimwit who demands that they buy today. Buyers don't want this. So we have a big issue here, tug of war. What can we do about this? Roger said what I said. <laughs> Roger, I got to go find what Roger said. I, I knew I was going to forget that, Roger. Hang on. Let me run back up here because it was really cool. Uh, I love all of this. And Roger, could you put it back in there for me, please? Because I, I, I am missing it. But, but it was very apropos. So Roger's going to uh, hopefully, yes, yes, thank you, Roger. So Roger says the prospects want to believe that they're in control, and actually they are in control, right? Okay, so how can we make this process, the buying-selling process, it takes two people, note this. If you live on a desert island all by yourself, and let's suppose you have plenty of food and water, just so we can assume that you're going to live there for, you know, longer than like, you know, two weeks before you starve to death. But if you live on a desert island all by yourself, guess what? You don't need selling by anything. You don't even need money because money is all about values changing hands, right? You don't need any of that. So, the selling process, it's all, there are always two things involved, a buyer and a seller, right? So how can we make this buying slash selling process easier on everyone? And by the way, Stephen, I'm talking to you, buddy, and everybody else. You're going to make a lot more money faster and easier than you ever dreamed possible when you do this. So a few years ago, I was faced... In, in a different business, so we're, we're talking about decades, okay? Remember, remember how old I am? We're talking about decades. I was faced with the same dilemmas. I was killing, I was doing well, but I was killing myself. Working on godly hours, massively stressed out, you know? And uh, I decided to do things differently. I'm not the only person in the world who's figured this out, by the way. I, I've run into this before, but I just kind of put it all together by myself. I made a little experiment. Basically, what I did was turn the whole traditional sales process on its head. I flipped it upside down. 
and we'll see what it, we'll see what we mean by the, what I mean by that in just a second. I and I created my five minute cell system because when I flipped it upside down and made a few tweaks, which we're going to talk about now, guys. Before you leave at the end of the webinar, make sure I give you the link to the notes so that you have the five minute cell system, okay? For free, all right? But I noticed that when I started playing around with this thing, right, when I started questioning the traditional sales model, when I basically flipped it on its head, sales presentations went really fast and they were a lot less stressful and uh i started closing more after a few tweaks so i'm going to show you how this works and then i'm going to show you what you need to do to get rolling to get this rolling <laughs> in your own business okay so the five minute cell system turned the traditional model on its head so question guys what is the last thing or really the next to last thing? When I when I told you, when, when I had the traditional model up here, what was the last thing or next to last thing that happened? The big thing without which you don't get paid. What is that? Closing, amen. Thank you, Martin. The close. So you know what I did? And this is how I sell today, guys. It's how, it's how I've sold um, in this local marketing stuff. It's how I sold forever. And it really, really works. I mean, why why fix something that's not broken? Instead of putting the clothes last, I put it first. Ballsy thing to do, I know, right? And ladies, we're talking about virtual, okay? I know. But Lee, you can't do that because they don't know all that crap that you thought they needed to know. They don't. They don't know the benefits. They don't know the features. They don't know the when, the why, the where. They don't know. They don't even know the price, right? So I just, uh. Put that first. Well, there's that, Keith. Yeah, I just put that first, right? I I would start. I started. I started starting all of my sales presentations by saying, uh, I, "This was in the real estate business." Okay, so this is like late '80s, late '80s through late '90s, mid '80s, mid '80s through mid '90s. Okay, so so ten years there. So. I just, uh, and I, I did a lot of listings, all right? I, I didn't really like doing buyers so much. That I, I thought it was crazy for me to drive people around. But anyway, I did a lot of listings. And so I go to listing appointments. And uh, uh, when I when I started creating this five-minute sales system, the first thing I did was walk into the listing and saying, hi, I'm Lee with Remax. Hi, how are you doing? Great to meet you. Very nice house. You told me all about it on the phone. By the way, are you ready to get it on the market right now? And I would have the listing agreement in my hand. You would be shocked at the number of people that just nodded up and down. I mean, it was insane. Yeah, I mean, even if one out of a hundred nodded up and down, it would, that would be insane. Because aren't they supposed to know all that crap? Well, a lot of people don't really want to know all that crap. They just want to meet a nice person who they really believe in for whatever reason, probably because I had on a really nice suit and my hair was cut and I didn't, you know, look like a hippie or anything, right? I mean, my shoes were shined, drove up in a nice car, all that stuff, right? So they look at me, here's a real estate agent. I need to sell my house. Looks like a nice guy. Hey, you ready to get going on this? Cool. Yeah, yeah, let's let, let's do. What do we got to do? Well, we got to fill out the listing agreement. Okay, well, here's the list. Here's the listing agreement. Fine. Here's what it does. Blah, 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 blah. All I need is your signature. Bam. Great. Cool. This is what happens next. Give me your keys. Sign in the yard. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was shocking that that just that one thing, this is not the totality of it, but just that one thing was shocking. So what about the ones who weren't going to buy right off the bat? Because it was still the majority of people. Well, they and you tell me those of you who are actually in the trenches doing sales, and I know some of you are newbies and you're trying to figure out how to do this, and that's totally cool. You're actually in a better position than the people who've learned to do stuff the hard way because you have nothing to unlearn. But those of you who are actually have some experience talking to people about buying your thing, tell me I'm wrong about this, okay? A lot of the people, even, even if you're good at qualifying people, a lot of the people turn out to be tire kickers. Remember we talked about them lying during the qualification process? Are you ready, willing, and able? Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. 
right? They're tire kickers. Now, the tire kickers, guess what? Are pretty much like 999 times out of a thousand are pretty much never going to buy. And they're not worth screwing around with. But within that within that whole universe of people who don't buy from you right away, there are some golden nuggets. And those are the people who just had a valid question or two before they bought. Now, Stephen uh, says, I'm absolutely right. And uh, those of you, um, uh, w- w- without, re- without revealing anything personal, I, I know that Stephen has had, because of Stephen's background, some a ton of high-level sales training. I'm just pointing that out. Tom says right on. Yeah. Most of the ones you don't sell, most of the ones that most of the people that you talk to when you get to the sales presentation, they were never going to buy in the first damn place. Big waste of time. Stressing yourself out. I mean, the waste of time is bad enough, but all the stress that comes with that, you know, hating selling because yet another one slipped through the net because they were never going to buy in the first freaking place. And of the ones who were going to buy, but they didn't just, you know, because they they didn't just sign up right off the get-go, all they got is a question or two. So, you know, uh, with with the, I was talking about listing houses in real estate. So they might say, well, yeah, but uh, we're a little worried about the house that we're going to. We haven't really bought one yet. Okay, so that's a valid deal. It's like, where the hell are we going to live, Lee? That's a very valid deal. That's a completely valid objection. Okay, so I handle the valid objection, and then I ask them again. So, you know, let, let's say I, I put that objection to bed, and forget how. There are ways to put that objection to bed that makes sense for the buyer. And then just say, now that we've figured out that you're not going to be living in the br- under a bridge, that you're going to have a really cool house. You ready to get going? Absolutely. We're excited. This is the way it works, guys, when you're doing it right. This is the way it works in your business. I talked about real estate, but in local business marketing, this is the way it works. So many people you're talking to on sales presentations have zero. They're not ready. They don't even know where ready is. They're not really willing because, frankly, they're not able because they're confused about or they don't have the money or or they're just really just trying to figure out what it is that you do because maybe they might need that sometime in the future. Big waste of time, tire kickers. Most of the people you all are talking to are tire kickers, and you're wasting a massive amount of your time talking to them and stressing yourself out. So I didn't want to waste time answering. So. We're there, right? But look, some people had a question or two. So I took it to the next level. I decided I didn't even want to answer those questions, really, unless I absolutely had to. In other words, I wanted to go ahead and give them the answers in advance. So I modified the system a little bit. The next thing I changed was this. And this is in the real estate business. And I do this in the local marketing business and have for years. And it works like gangbusters. I go ahead before the before the sales presentation, I go ahead and send them all the information that they need to decide on their own because we determined that they want to be in control. And we also determined, guess what? They actually are in control. Stephen, that's beautiful. I'm glad you said that now. I'm going to get to that in a second. They actually are in control. If you think you're in control as a salesperson, you are smoking something. They actually are in control. Now, they wanted to so, so that they so that the prospect could decide on their own if they wanted to buy before the sales interview. Everything. I give them everything. Price, what's going to be done, ex- expected results, Handling objections, Stephen says, thinking about it, this is Stephen talking, thinking about it when I had to overcome five or six objections before closing them, often were people I ultimately (laughs) wished I never accepted as my clients. Yes, they're pains in the butt. If you have to fight too hard for a client, 
it just rarely works out very, very well. Not only that, Stephen and everybody else, but guess what? All those people have maybe two or three objections 99% of the time. In other words, 99% of the time, it's the same freaking two or three objections all the freaking time. So why do I need to explain that to them, right? Let's say you're doing the social media posting deal, right? Just to use an example. So, and you're selling to plumbers. Maybe a plumber doesn't understand. I think most do, but maybe a plumber doesn't understand what this is going to do for them. Well, that's an objection. Hey, Lee, this sounds great, but so what? I mean, my business is okay. Uh, my Facebook page looks like crap because I'm, you know, working 14 hours a day, you know, plumbing, but... I mean, are you sure this is going to do anything? Well, if you're in a sales situation, you better answer that objection or you're going to lose that valid buyer. And the way to answer that, by the way, is just to go out on the Internet and get them some information that about social selling, okay? Just something that they can latch on to, look at, and feel good about. <coughs> Excuse me. But... Why waste your time talking about that to the person when you could have sent that information to them in the first place and when maybe there are two or three standard objections, maybe all the time, which can be handled before they ever talk to you? Okay. Now, guys, I have a little bit of a cough. You may have heard me cough a couple of times. So I'm putting a. Um, little throat lozenge in my mouth. That's what all that noise is. That's why I sound goofy now. But it's better than coughing, right? So I give them everything. Before, but, but before they talk to Lee ever, I give them everything. Price. I give them price. But Lee, what if they decide that they can't pay that? I mean, seriously. I mean, if they're that spooked about price, then, you know, they're really not serious. Everything. What has to be done, expected results, everything. Now, this new change meant that by far, check this out, most of the people I ended up actually speaking with bought, and they bought within a few minutes, because all of that stuff, Martin, hold, the, hold that thought, and Martin, if I forget to, to talk about that, uh, let me know. All of that stuff can be handled without you being there. And that's what you want to do. Stephen, I never negotiate. Not with this stuff. But, uh, but Stephen, you may be selling a package that I'm not selling. So, so that may not apply to you, okay? Then Stephen, yes. Stephen says, I'm talking higher end. Stephen, absolutely. Yeah. But look, okay, Stephen, so don't give them, in, in your case, don't give them a price range because you know that they're going to take the lower one, right? You might as well just give them the lower price. Just give them a price. And if they want to negotiate, fine. If you're selling a higher end package, then great. They're buying a higher end package. You're not selling to idiots. They're not going to like, you know, freak out and have a panic attack because of your price. They're going to say, well, that's a little more than I wanted to pay, but the rest of this looks pretty good. And this is a really professional salesperson and I really like them. There you go, Stephen. These are not idiots, right? So I'm just going to go with this guy. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. And, you know, I'm going to shave off some of that price. You know, we'll, we'll work it out. You know, 10%, 20% off, I'll shave off some of that price. That's the way those guys think, Stephen, right? And Stephen, you know that already. So this new change meant that when I am actually talking with someone, on, usually it's on Zoom nowadays, but when I'm talking with someone on Zoom, there's a really high probability they're going to buy. And a lot of them are going to buy in a very few minutes. Now, look what this means. Not only is it massively less stressful, because I'm not trying to push a pile of wet spaghetti up a hill, 
not only is it massively less stressful, but it's a lot shorter. Now, there's some back end that you have to have, and you got to send them some information. And Martin, we need to talk about that, so don't 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 forget to let me talk about that. You got to send them some information. There's more back end going on with this than there is with the traditional sales model. And the traditional sales model, you pretty well shoot from the hip. It's not good to do that, but you you can do that with this. You cannot shoot from the hip. Okay, you'll you'll end up without a sale. So there's a little more planning. Because you got to get them some stuff, right? You got to get it to them, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you organize a little bit of that, and it doesn't take long to organize that. You organize a little bit of that. This means you can do a ton more sales presentations per week that have a greater chance of closing, which means that you're going to be really excited about prospecting. And you're going to want to really ramp up your prospecting because now you got all this time during the week because you're not spending forever on your sales presentations. You're not talking to, a, you know, whipping a dead horse and you're not spending all this time following up with idiots. You're literally just talk. You're preaching to the choir. This is what I call finding the choir. You're preaching to the choir. OK. You make a lot more money this way. And have a lot more fun because you're not going to be so stressed out. See, so this resulted in me not being nearly so stressed out. If someone wasn't going to buy, they'll let me, they would let me know and they will let you know before the appointment. And I loved that. That was not a fail for me. That was a win for me because I'm not spending more time with that person who wasn't going to buy anyway. The tire kickers are just going to go away. There'll still be a few. It just is what it is. But most of them are just going to go away. A lot of the tire kickers will pretend that they got blown out of the water by the price. So don't misinterpret that. And when I actually do talk to people, we don't have a semi-adversarial situation that I've unwittingly set up. So there, the prospect is a lot happier. They're a lot calmer. They feel like they're in control because, frankly, they are in control. And, frankly, they always were in control, but I'm not fighting that control anymore, right? When I started my local marketing business back in 2010, I implemented my five-minute sales system. It worked even better than when I developed in real estate. I mean, it worked like gangbusters. Because, you know, the prices were a lot less. You know, Steven's selling higher-end stuff. That's cool. Bigger prices, a little different. Most of y'all are not selling stuff that's that expensive. We're not talking ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, okay? Most of y'all are not selling stuff that's that expensive. Keith is ready to follow the yellow brick. But Keith, I'm going to tell you about the yellow brick road in a minute. But I want to make sure that I deliver on the promise of the where you signed up for the webinar that you actually know what to do. Okay. So Keith is referring to the fact that if you want to, I've got a new class coming up where I'm going to work with you to build this whole thing for yourself. I'm going to teach you how to do this in your own business okay now keith has been on uh, you know plenty of stuff with me before keith knows exactly what i'm talking about we're not there yet i want to make sure that i deliver what i told you i would deliver today before i tell you about the uh, before i tell you about the coaching so well i guess we're here it would help if I read my own damn PowerPoint, wouldn't it? And I want to give you a roadmap so you can do this too. <laughs> this is hilarious. Yes, I actually have done this before. Pretty funny. So this is pretty simple. This is the way you guys need to be doing this now. Just so you know, hang on. It's over here somewhere. The really important parts of this webinar I put on a look I, I put it on a word document turned it into a PDF all this stuff the five stages my model the traditional sales model and then um, the five minute sales model okay 
It's all on here. Let me pop this in the chat. You can download this and use it. Please use it to simplify your life and to make more money. Oh. And if somebody could click on that and confirm to me that it's actually downloading, I would appreciate that. It should. But uh, if you could do that, that'd be great. So let's get back here. This is how you need to be doing this, guys. Thank you, Arthur. I appreciate that. You need to set up a sales presentation. Now, now look. Thank you, guys. Yeah, everybody's saying it's working. So you need to set up a sales presentation. So look, look, you're going to have to prospect. Rafal, hang, hang on, buddy. I can put it in here for you also. I think. Hold on, guys. Rafal, you should see that as a somehow connected to your comment. Rafal, if you don't, let me know. But anyway, obviously you got a prospect, right? Otherwise, you're going to have no sales presentations. But because we don't want to waste our precious time, literally, I got news for you. You got the same 24 hours in a day as uh, Bill Gates has. That's kind of a sobering thought. The guy living under a bridge smoking crack, you and Bill Gates all have the same amount of time during a day, yet your lives, and I'm not really hating on the addict. I have enormous sympathy for people like that. But uh, I'm just pointing out that you have exactly the same amount of time per day. And you're probably using it a little differently. So you're going to have to prospect. You're going to have to find, you, you got to do all that front end stuff. You're just going to have to find people who are interested in your deal. All right. But from there, when somebody raises their hand from that point, raises their hand. Okay. You send them out a cold email, they email you back, they call you back. Uh, uh, they land on your website, they fill out the contact form, all those ways that people, um, all those ways that people say, hey, I'm interested in your deal, okay? That, that turns them from the universe of possibilities into a real, um, I'm having a senior moment, <laughs> a real prospect. <laughs> Rafal, hang on, buddy. I'll get you straightened out at the end of the at the end of the webinar. So that that turns them into a real prospect. Somebody who's written, they haven't paid you anything. They just raise their hand and say, "Yeah, I'm interested." That's a prospect. So you're still going to have to make prospects, right? But once you've got and and look, if you don't know how to do that, then hit me up. You can. Take, get the replays of one of my other two courses that I talked about this year that's going to teach you how to do that. But once you've got the prospect, okay, and, and you're doing your thing and they raise their hand and they say, yeah, I'm interested in this. And you do a little, you know, maybe email them back, say, cool. When's a good time for us to get together for about 15 minutes? You never say five minutes. It's going to take five minutes or less, but you don't do that because people can't buy into the fact that this could be that fast, right? OK, so you say, you know, when, when do you have 15 or you know, 30 minutes uh, for us to get on a Zoom presentation and talk about this? And, you know, just let me explain it to you. Right. Um, Lorenzo Ditto, I'll get you straightened out at the end of the webinar. So. You know, so you make your sales presentation. So from that point that you've got a sales presentation with someone. Lorenzo, I'm going to use your name just so I have a name to talk about. I've got a appointment what's day monday i've got appointment with lorenzo thursday at four o'clock p.m eastern standard time right i got an appointment this is what i need to do before the appointment okay i need to send lorenzo all the information that he needs a couple of days before so i need to send it like on uh, tuesday or wednesday and it was tomorrow or the next day a couple of days before because i want to give them plenty of time to open it up and look at it i need to send that information everything that they need the benefits the description of what i'm selling the benefits of the feature the features all, all the details and the price i want to send that all i do it with uh, somebody asked me if I did it on a video sales letter or an FAQ. I just do it 
real quick on a PDF. Now it's going to change according to uh, it's going to change according to your price point. Uh, Stephen sells higher price stuff, so Stephen, what you send, if you're going to do it like this, what you send needs to look a little slicker than what you would send to somebody who's you know buying your hundred dollar a month uh, social posting thing, right? Granted, so so that's what the coaching is going to be about. It's going to be helping you figure out all that stuff. But anyway, so you send them all the information. I want Lorenzo to have everything. I really want Lorenzo to have read it. And I want Lorenzo to be totally ready. And guess what? If Lorenzo's a tire kicker, Lorenzo's going to get probably blown out of the water by the price. Well, hell no, I'm not paying them $100 a month for that. That's a tire kicker response, okay? But if they do have a valid question, so I want the tire kickers just, you know, I, I always, uh, either the day before or the morning of the appointment, I just call people back and say, hey, this is Lee. We got an appointment day four, right? Cool, well, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Tire kickers will bail out at that time, and it will save me a massive amount of time and a massive amount of stress. You don't have to call them up. You can just email them, whatever, right? And again, not every, you know, remember, people are liars. Some people are. And, not, you know, you are. This is not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than the alternative. Now, on the sales presentation, let's say you sent somebody the information. They looked at it. And you can, I mean, I, I don't, but you can literally get into little things like, did they click on the link or did they click on the link and all that stuff? I don't do that, right? Well, there's that, Rick, and that's very important. So I, I would encourage you to go with the bigger one. <laughs> Amen to that. But on the sales presentation, this is how the sales presentation goes down. So let's say we're doing it on Zoom. So, um, you know, you, you got to send them a Zoom link, right? So send them a Zoom, you know, let, let's say we're doing it through email or whatever, or Facebook, you know, send them a Zoom link. They get on here. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Well, great. Well, you know, and you got all the who shot John about, hi, how you doing? Because you can see each other and all that stuff. That's going to take all, of, what, four nanoseconds? You know, like, hey, so-and-so, you know, it's great. Great to see you. How you doing? Well, I'm doing really good. Well, Cool. I really appreciate you uh, taking your time. And let's talk about this some. By the way, guys, by the way, by the way, those, those are like the greatest three words in selling. By the way, are you ready to get going on this now? You start by asking for the sale. You ask the closing question first. A shocking number of people, because they've actually read your thing, because they really were interested. And they actually do have the money to do this, and they really do have a problem that needs solving. So you say, by the way, are you ready to get going on this now? Yeah, actually, yeah. Well, um, it looked, I read your thing. It looked really cool. Uh, wh what do we do next? Then you go into, well, here's how you pay, blah, blah, blah. Stephen, I got about several hundred requests I haven't accepted. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll go over there and accept your request at some point in the near future. I'm uh, my bad. So, <laughs> so start out the sales presentation with, you know, after the, Hey, how you doing? And all that stuff with the closing question first. That does a bunch of stuff. Number one, a shocking number of people are going to say, yes, I'm ready. However, they're going to say it, but they're going to basically say, yes, I'm ready. If you do, if a tire kicker did get through, you know, all the obstacles that you put in front of them, if you do have a tire kicker, that's another thing that's going to blow them out of the water. What? You know, ready? No. I mean, I thought we were just getting on here for me to find out about this. And then the the little alarm bells need to go off in your head saying, eh, it's probably a tire kicker. Okay. And then some people, really not that many guys, most of the people giving you objections are tire kickers. And most of the people and of the ones who aren't, most of those people who are not tire kickers, they have valid objections. You yourself, 
through the way you're selling are creating most of those objections. Okay, by turning this around, it turns out you don't have nearly as many objections anyway. So, hey, you ready to get going on this now? Um, yeah, actually, I mean, it looked really, really cool. I do have a couple of questions. Would you mind answering a couple of questions? That's a valid response from a non from a non tire kicker. Yeah, sure. What, what, what you got? Well, uh, yeah, I saw the price. I'm cool with the price. Uh, I just want to know how long does it take before you can get this going? Valid question. I'm paying you money. When can you deliver the goods? Totally valid question. You know, and according to what you're selling, well, you know, uh, uh, we'll have you up and running within 48 hours. Uh, we'll have most of what we talked about running within about by the end of the week. Uh, there were a couple of little things, and I pointed those out in the information that I sent you that take a little longer. Whatever, you know, they're just telling the truth. Once you answer and you're not going to get many objections. It's not like you're going to get a laundry list. You're going to get one, maybe two. Once you answer those, then you just ask the closing question again. But you do it like, Arthur, I'm going to use your name. So, Arthur, now that you know how long this is going to take, right, I'm just going to 48 hours before we get this up and running, you know, which is pretty fast, actually. But, Arthur, with that in mind, now are, are you ready to get going on this, or did you have another question? Just getting down to brass tacks, guys. It's a fish or cut bait time. Why? Because Lee's time's massively valuable. Seriously. Ray, hold that thought to the end, please. It's a fabulous question, but let, let's hit that on Q&A. So start by asking them sale. If they don't go for that, then ask them what questions they have. Usually people will volunteer the fact, well, you know, I'm kind of fuzzy about this or that, or or I kind of have this question, that question. You know, answer that question legitimately, right? And notice you're not you're not doing it in a self-serving way. You're literally just answering the freaking question. No manipulation, no stress, nothing that's gonna make them get out their, you know, get get out all their armor and put it on their psychological armor. Oh, crap, he's going to, you know, I'm going to get screwed, right? You look so transparent to them. You are so upfront to them, okay? They feel, and they actually do because they always did, frankly. They have so much control over the process, all right? It's going to do a ton of stuff. They're going to be relaxed, and they're going to trust you a lot sooner, because you're not trying to manipulate them. So ask the question again. And if they don't buy on that second question, look, I already answered the objections, right? If they don't buy on that same on that second question, me, I just thank them for the time, put them on my autoresponder and let my follow-up system do the work. But seriously, I do not try to whip, whip a dead horse, which I know is an awful metaphor. I wish I knew a better one, but it's just so descriptive, right? And a lot of times, you know, I just said, well, cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, that was the only question you had? Okay. I do not get into a lot of, uh, uh, what was that guy's name back in the day? Tom something wrote this great book on selling. But I don't get into a lot of, uh, well, if I, you know, um, Oh, you got another question? Well, now if I answered that question, are you ready to go? I don't get a lot of crap like that, okay? Hopkins, thank you so much, Hopkins, all right? I just assume that's true because, see, my goal is to get back to prospecting so I create more appointments because I'm looking for the golden nuggets and the low-hanging fruit, right? And I want to get rid of the bad ones as fast as possible because I don't want the stress. I really don't want to spend the time, and I really want to just work with people who want to work with me. This all kind of makes total sense, doesn't it? So if if they don't buy, I thank them for their time. Very polite, very professional. Put them on our responder, let that do the work. A lot of times, you know, some, is it most? No. Is it some? Yes. Is it enough to warrant a follow-up sequence on an autoresponder? Yes. Okay. Some call me back when they're ready. They just needed a little time. 
takes all of five minutes or, excuse me, fewer to do that. Like I said, a lot of people are just going to say yes to the first closing question. Really easy, guys. This is super, super easy. And it's obvious how easy this is. So I'm going to encourage you. Now, remember, stay until the end of the webinar because I'm going to, well, I already gave you some stuff. But anyway, so I would encourage you to do this in your business. Implement this in your business. I, I, I sh showed you exactly what to do. And if you missed that part, it's on this PDF, which I know a couple of people had trouble downloading. Just hang on to the end. We'll see if we can get you straightened out. It's all here. You can implement this. You can do this. It's going to make your life massively less stressful. And it's going to make you more money. It's going to make you a lot happier. It's going to make people who live around you a lot happier. I want to tell you one more thing. If you want help implementing this, I'm here for you. <clears throat> so in December, and I really wanted to get this in before the end of the year because I've got a big surprise for you guys, a good surprise, uh, a totally life-changing surprise in January that does not preclude this. The, these two things are separate. I'm just saying I needed to get the sales training in this year before we move on to some other stuff. But in, in December, I'm holding a webinar-based class teaching my five-minute sales system. Now, I've taught it to you in a qualitative way, all right? And a lot of you can just go off and implement it, and I'm giving you that for free. But if you need help doing this or if you want it tailored for your specific business, so just judging from the comments, I got people here who are selling high ticket stuff, mid ticket stuff and low ticket stuff. OK. I'm probably going to butcher this name. I apologize. Way. OK. W.A.I. Way. Uh, fabulous question. Can I please uh, answer that uh, after we go over this? I want to answer that question because it's really important. Now, so in December, I'm holding a webinar-based teaching class for my five-minute sales system. This is, let me explain this. This is webinar-based group coaching. You can go ahead to the sales page. We're going to look at the sales page together. No, I'm not going to read you the whole thing. I think that's utterly stupid. I just want to, you know, uh, hit a couple of highlights. We're all adults here. You, you can figure stuff out on your own. But if you want to go ahead and take a look at this, click on that. Um, so, December, class, webinar-based group coaching. Many of you have been on my previous webinar-based group coaching classes before. Many of you haven't. For those of you that have, I think it's safe to say they freaking rock. Stephen, did you enjoy the last class? Did you get a lot out of the last class that you were on? Very much. Stephen says very much. Yeah. I mean, I del look, I gave you all this for free. I deliver the freaking goods, and I'm going to change the way you do business for the better. Now, in this class, we're going to fill in. Thank you, Stephen. I, I really appreciate it. Stephen says, you always over deliver. I'm in for this one, too. In this class, we're going to fill in the details specifically for you, for your business. You're going to master this system. It is a little different from traditional selling. There are a couple of little deals, like you got to get the information to them before the sales presentation. That's a, it looks it's not tricky. It just takes a little more planning and you want it to look a certain way, there's a certain pattern that the information, like if you give them a PDF or something, there's a certain pattern that needs to follow, okay? Which for those of you who know how to write a long form sales letter, you do not need to learn copywriting. That literally takes years to get good at that. I have done copywriting for like 15 years. You don't need to do that. There's just a specific, again, it's psychology. It's the way people make decisions. You need to follow, follow a specific path in order, not in order to make this work, but in order to make this work really well. So I'm going to give that, we're going to, I'm going to teach all that to you. 
You're going to master this system with my help. Check out this next one. You're going to create the information you send to your clients before your sales presentation for your business. We'll get we'll get into the specific days in a minute, Thelma. By the way, it's all recorded and be in the members area. And just like I do in all of my classes, because I, you know, I just really, really, really want you to succeed, which is another, I, I just had a um, good, really good friend of mine, Steve Rosenbaum, where uh, you probably heard that name if you're like knocking around this stuff. Steve and I are really close friends. And Steve looked at my sales letter and looked at the price and told me that I was insane. Okay. But, you know, I, I try to get this down there. I try to make up in volume. What, what I'm missing out on in terms of the specific price, because I, I really, 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 really want a lot of you getting on there because I really want a lot of you actually learning how to make these businesses work because that's me helping you change your life. That is really cool. But anyway, so with my help, you're going to create the information you send your clients before the sales presentation. And check this next one out. You're going to have me right there with you tailoring this to whatever it is your cell you sell works for anything you can have email access to me okay so you can have homework in other words you're going to learn stuff create stuff send it to me i'm reading it i'm sending it back to you and uh steven and the others of you who've been on uh other uh, webinar based coachings with me sometimes we got a lot of back and forth and that's where a lot of the learning happens. Let's look at the sales letter together real fast, and then I'll answer all your questions. Here's the sales letter. Imagine never having to fear selling ever again. That right there is worth the price. Never having to worry about what you're going to say on the sales call, never having to follow up with all those people who can't make up their minds ever again. Uh, if you don't know me, you, you can read about me here. That's my face. <laughs> it says Lee. Right. Wow. Your program's a real deal. I've completed on only a fourth of the program and already have a client. I get testimonials like that all the time. You can read about me here. I'm not going to sit here and read you all this stuff. Lee reveals the secret I wish I already know. Uh, best of all, I got my first client in one week. And I'm just kind of reiterating what we talked about, but uh, it just sort of bears talking about a second. This is how most people sell. They qualify the prospect by asking them a bunch of questions. Most of y'all don't even do that, right? They bore the daylights out of the prospect by making them sit through a 30 minute sales presentation or worse. Some of y'all go uh, to an hour. I mean, my God. They spend endless frustrating hours day after day with various types of follow up. And honestly, they usually lose the sale. And we talked about this, selling like this is brutal. It's brutal for you and it's brutal for them. It's exhausting. You can read all about this, all about my method, which is simple as that. <laughs> Ken, I'll get the PDF, uh, I get the PDF link for you when, when we're done. If you're tired of beating your head against the wall, being frustrated, not building your business as fast as you want, keep reading. I'm going to show you something amazing. Then I talk about the system, which we've just talked about on the webinar. Again, you can read this. But here, this boils it down. This little list right here boils the whole thing down. You only speak with people who are already ready to buy. You're more of an order taker and an answerer of questions than, uh, than the old style salesperson. You're not a used car salesperson. You can do your entire sales presentation five minutes or less, probably should be the word fewer. Many times the whole thing takes only a few seconds. Why? Because they're already ready to buy and you ask them right off the bat. I mean, we talked, we just talked about it. Are you ready to get going on this today? You never ever have to handle objections again because they were pre-handled. And if they want to bring them up, fine. You can just Say, hey, uh, you know that uh, PDF I sent you? Can can you pull that link up? Well, look on this page right there. That's the answer to your question. Let's go over that. You can, you know, it's a lot smoother. You can easily work part-time and enjoy full-time income because you're so efficient. Or you can work full-time and make a massive ton of money. 
you naturally attract only the best clients. And I had somebody, Stephen, I think it was you who talked about the clients where you're really having to struggle to get them to close. They are always the pains in the butt. They're always the ones that I end up firing. You naturally attract only the best clients. They're relaxed. You look transparent as all get out because you actually are transparent. And um, hang on, so, so somebody needs a link to something. Hold on just a second. So you look totally transparent because you are transparent. The buyer was, as, as we, I'm not going to go over the whole webinar again, that would be stupid, but the buyer was always in the driver's seat anyway right so you're just acknowledging that fact and working with that steven says it seems to me that if you have a lot of leads that you can make quite a bit of money with your approach and if i'm right a lot less time amen to that that's the deal right there because you're going to spend less time on your sales presentation and hint hint more time on your prospecting which means you're going to create more of those golden nuggets per unit time. Those people that really, really do want to buy from you. And you virtually never have to do any real follow-up of any kind. I don't do follow-up. I, I, I think it's just a massive waste of time. That's how much I'm charging you for the $67. That's what Steve Rosenbaum he didn't get mad at me. We're, we're, we're really good friends. He, he said, Lee, that's an insane price. And I said, Steve, yeah, I know. But I, I, guys, I love money. Okay. I really do. And I spend a lot of money. God knows. But uh, I really, really, really love helping you. And I know that not everybody can at, at the moment can afford the big price. Maybe it'll be the big price in a couple of years. And you'll just say, well, I missed out on Lee. I'm sorry. But uh, right now, if you want to buy this today, $67. Group coaching. Are you in? Thelma, the webinars will be December the 4th, the 11th, and the 18th. Three webinars. They're at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Time. These are Wednesdays, I think. Okay, they're going to be recorded. But remember, you've got email access to me, and I'm really... I. I am really interested in you actually learning and implementing this, okay? So I really, 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 if you just got like on, let's say you missed the 11th and you looked at it and you had a question, you're going to have a specific email address for this class. Hit me up. Well, you know, I'll, I'll explain it to you, okay? If you're in, click the buy button. Again, five-minute sales system, a series of group coaching webinars. We just talked about the dates. You're going to learn my radical, counterintuitive, easy, fun, and profitable five-minute sales system. It's going to revolutionize your life. Those of you who have been on other classes with me, you know that when I say it's going to revolutionize your life, I am not kidding. It's going to make building your local marketing business a piece of cake. I'm going to pop this uh, link into the uh, chat again in case you didn't get it. That should be it, I think. Yep. This is going to be open for a few days. I know we're running up to Thanksgiving. I know today's Monday. I think I can keep this open at this price through Wednesday. I may keep it open through Friday. Also, guys, and I don't have a specific counter on this. Um, I can deal with a lot of people, but I can't deal with a mass ton of people. All right. That would be unfair to you. So if I get a ton of people buying this thing, uh, then, I'll, then I'll have to close it out on Wednesday. If not, I'll close it out on Friday. I'm just letting you know how long you have to buy this. Okay. Uh, that's it and all about it. That's the deal. Let's make selling easy. Let's make it fun. Let's make it profitable. And let's you grow your business because you're not spending all this time being dead horses, and you're not stressed out about the sale, selling thing, which means that you're really going to enjoy prospecting because prospecting means now that you get more of these people who really wanted to buy from you in the first place. Sounds great, guys. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. See y'all later.